Let's look, let's look at strain in cyclic molecules. A simple cyclic molecule has three carbons, uh, cyclopropane. Here's a two-dimensional representation of it. And, and I think you can see if we cite down this carbon-carbon bond, all of the bonds to the hydrogens are eclipsed. So we have an eclipse pair there, there, everywhere, and each, each count 1 kcal per mole of, to uh, mol per mole of torsional strain. Uh, and we represent it like this, uh, with a little bit more perspective. We can still see that these are eclipsed. Here is an actual rotating molecule. We're looking straight down on top of it. Now, if I bend it back, you can see these three carbon atoms make a plane. So, but now if I cite down any carbon-carbon bond, you can see we have really significant torsional interactions as these pairs of bonds are eclipsed. And so they would each count one kcal per mole. It doesn't matter which one I cite down. I'm going to get these torsional interactions uh, in which the bonds are eclipsed. In addition, I have angle strain because for tetrahedral center, as illustrated either here or here, we expect the bond angle to be 109.5, so the electron pairs coming out from that atom are as far apart as possible. But when we, we the actual angle in the equilateral triangle is interior angle is 60 degrees, so this is deviates significantly from planaria, from 109.5 bound in the, t in the tetrahedron. So that causes significant strain, hence raising the energy. So the two forms of main strain energy in cyclopropane are the torsional interactions because we've eclipsed these bonds and then the angle strain. Now let's look at cyclobutane again here, uh, represented here in just sort of a planar form. You can tell we would have a lot of torsional strain here for these eclipsed bonds. But in addition, we have angle strain because the angle here is 90 degrees in, a squ in each square of the interior angle. So that deviates from 109.5. So how does the ring adapt? It, it adapts by puckering. This is an example of a pucker. We can show that we keep three atoms in the ring, and then one puckers out. And in the process, if we cite down the carbon-carbon bonds, we see we have some relief of the strain, uh, the torsional strain, as these hydrogens are like, starting to be pointed far and farther and farther apart. And again, we're deviating from perfect planarity, so that bond angle is increasing, so we're decreasing both angle strain and torsional strain. Let's go to the five carbon ring cyclopentane. Uh, there it is, and here it is represented uh, in sort of a linear fashion. And again, we have, if the ring remains unpuckered, we have all these torsional interactions that will raise for each eclipse bond one kcal per mole the energy. But you see, we can actually have a pucker that would actually facilitate lower the energy due to this torsional strain. Uh, ideally, also the bond angles here in cyclopentane are really close to ideal for a tetrahedron. So. Here we're concerned more about the torsional interactions than anything else. So now if I rotate this molecule about, I think you can see there's essentially four atoms, carbon atoms in the plane and one sticking out, uh, which is um, similar to this representation over here. And if I were to cite down the carbon-carbon bonds, you see there is, uh, I'm getting some deviations from the eclipse thing. And look at this. I mean, there's a significant deviation from the eclipse form. Uh, and if I go down here, it's even more significant. So what you can see is by puckering, we can, one, alleviate ring strain, which is not a problem, or angle strain, which is not a problem with cyclopentane, uh, but we clearly uh, help relieve the torsional strain energies. The last case is cyclohexane. Again, we have a six-membered ring that's shown here in the plane of view. And again, we'd have maximal sort of torsional interactions for every pair of eclipse bonds, but we know the cyclohexane ring forms a chair, and it does so to eliminate, to alleviate both the ring strain, because 120 degrees is not ideal either, because the other bonds are forced to be closer, um, and then the torsional strain. So here's the top-down view of cyclo, um, cyclohexane, and if we rotate this around, I think you can see now we have a familiar chair form. Uh, this carbon is pointed up, this carbon is pointed up here, and you can see there's really four atoms in the plane, one above and one below. So, but this is the essential plane, and I hope you can easily see the axial and equatorial hydrogens. Now let's cite down one of these carbon-carbon bonds, and oh my gosh, it looks like there is no torsional interactions at all. Not only have we released the bond strain because all the bonds are now, or angle strain, all the bonds are now 109.5 in the system, we've also el eliminated the torsional strain uh, because now we have basically um, staggered bonds as we cite down any carbon-carbon bond, no matter how we want to do it. So here's another one. You can see, citing down this, they're all staggered. Uh, citing down this, they're staggered. So we have a system, by puckering the ring, we alleviate angle strain, 
and return it to ideality for the cyclohexane, and we also get completely get rid of torsional interactions. And of course, with just cyclohexane, there are no six-atom interactions to worry about, so there's no steric interactions to